Welcome to Shark Tank, where three sharks will either invest in your idea or flush it down the toilet. See what the next big thing for your lawnmower could be on Shark Tank. Bring out the first idea, man. Yeah, this better be good. Anthony here has spent minutes on an idea on how to get people to check the oil on their lawnmowers. Let's see if the sharks will go for this new state-of-the-art technology, or if they'll flush it down the toilet. You done with the fancy introduction? How's it going, sharks? I got a million dollar idea. I know you're just gonna love it, all right? Who hates checking that pesky oil on that riding lawnmower? Yeah. 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 Come on, Junior, I know you don't like it. I hate checking that oil. Well, check it out. When you go to sit down and you go to start it, there's a built-in speaker on the mower with my voice, and it comes on and it goes, hey, check that oil. And then you're like, hey, whatever, I ain't gonna check it. And then you try starting it again, and it's like, hey, I'm warning you, check that oil, buddy, otherwise bad things are gonna happen, you know? So then you're like, hey, whatever, dude. And you keep going, and it's like, hey, yeah, yeah. Kablam! You get sucked in the side of the head, big arm comes out and smacks you. Oh. Tells you, hey, you better check that oil. And then you're just like, all right, all right, I'll check it. Shakes you up. So what do you think? Who's, any thinkers who wants to collab here? Wow, seems a little violent. Yeah, I don't think I want something like that. I don't know. Yeah, well guess what? Sometimes in the world, you gotta be a little violent in order to get your point across. Like checking the oil, capiche? I mean, what if it's like an old woman or something? There's different thresholds you can set for the, for the sock, for elderly people. We, we kept that in mind when we developed the product. So there's a soft punch for say an elderly woman. All right. Let's see if any other grass rats want to invest in your idea. Flippers? Uh, I don't think so. Junior? Uh, well, let's see. Uh, I don't think so. Well, that's two no's, so, Terrell, how about you? Sorry, Anthony. Ah, uh, 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 that's disgusting! Uh, that's rain. Uh, that one was a little wet. Uh, Looks like your idea just got flushed down the toilet, Anthony. Thanks for coming in. Next! Ooh, you grass rats! You'll be sorry! You'll be sorry you passed on this idea! You guys are disgusting! I'm out of here! Uh, uh. Alright, let's bring out the next idea, man. Ronnie here has an idea that he thinks the Sharts will truly like. That guy. Let's head in for a closer listen and see if this is something the Sharts will bite on. Hey, how are we doing today, Sharts? I think I got a couple of you in my skivvies right now. <laughs> well, I got an idea for a push mower. All wheel drive. What do you think about that? You can really fleece the customer for money on that one. Two transmissions. Double the money, four drive wheels. They're all gonna wear out quick, cause the drive wheels. Two belts, that's extra money right there. And uh, you can even hit them with two cables. So what do you think, Sharts? You wanna make money with me? Let's make some money. Huh, that's a terrible idea to begin with. And they already got it. Can you believe that? All right, Ronnie, you're all out of ideas. Time for us to vote. Any of you grass rats want to invest in Ronnie's already done ideas? I don't think so. No. Uh. Oh, my God. Oh, oh, this is just in my eyes. Oh. Pterodactyl hair. Today, we're going to do an engine swap on this here Simplicity Regent with a 38 inch deck. This mower is in pretty nice shape. I paid a hundred bucks for it. Seat's not ripped. The only problem is Kohler, Kroller Courage. They done run it out of oil and locked it up tight. So you know what happens to these bucket engines when you run them out of oil? They kick the bucket. <laughs> So we're gonna put a Kroller Command single cylinder on here. We're gonna get rid of the Courage because it gave up. It didn't have the Courage to stay running. 
and we're gonna put a command in it. And we're gonna show you that command engine that we got. It's on a Craftsman. So this is the Crawler Command. 17 horse, I know that region's got an 18, one horsepower ain't gonna make no difference. <laughs> and it's on this here Craftsman. Now the reason we gotta use this engine on that Regent, on that simple city, is because this one's got a fuel pump, because the gas tank's under the seat on that simple city, and it's got the bigger alternator system got a voltage regulator because that simple city's got electric clutch on it so that's why we chose this one now this one didn't have any spark because the coil was bad so I had a good use coil so we got our auxiliary gas tank hooked up to it and I need a screwdriver I just had one here here it is Turn the key on, because it don't start. This has got a bad solenoid. And we're gonna start this thing up, and see if it runs. to put in that simple city. We drug this out of the junkyard. Well, we got the mower in here. So now we need to disconnect the choke and throttle cable, the fuel line, our electrical connections, take the hood off so we can start removing the engine. Got our starter wire disconnected, our main wiring plug disconnected. Now I'm going to take off this heat shield. Now I do have a bunch of videos on this Crowler bucket engine. In case you want to look at those videos and other things we did. Alright, how does this... Walking. Oh, the muffin pipe's already gone. Oh, we must have robbed it off of there already. <laughs> so the only problem I could see with mounting that command engine, which might be the muffin, might give us a little problem. So I'm gonna go ahead and take all this stuff off. Now I'm gonna jerk the deck off. Get that out of my way. Get the belt off. Plus this deck has got a bunch of holes rotted in it. I think we already mentioned that. So I got a different deck to put on here. Now I need to remove the electric PTO clutch and cut that zip tie. Hopefully this plug will come off easily enough. That little catch. Okay, good. Sometimes they can be tough. And then take out this 5.8 bolt. Hopefully the clutch will come off. Oh, we got lucky. Now, always be aware that you do have this anti-rotation device here. This little rod that fits in there. You don't know how many times people have come in, they ripped the wires out of the clutch because they never got it hooked back on there right. So you always got to be aware of that. Now let's get this pulley off if it'll come off. You know what? The hole in the bottom of here is big enough for the pulley to fit through. So I think if I just push on the clutch brake, it should loosen up the belt enough to get it off. 
parking brake on. Which I don't think, there we go. It does work. Oh yeah, belt's loose now. We do have this one little guide here, but as we pull the engine off, it should fall out of place. So now I gotta give me a 916 socket and take these bolts out. You can see this was loose. And remember, you got your grounds hooked to the engine, which I always think is a bad idea. It should just ground it right to the frame. Now I can let the lift down and we can remove that bucket engine. Bucket engine. There's still good parts on here, starter. Plus I gotta get that engine pulley off. I thought the hole on the bottom was big enough. Why is it fighting me? Careful. Like a key. And we're locked. May have to do a heat quench to get that off. I'm gonna try the old hair, air hammer first. So I got me a shorter 716 fine tread bolt that I always keep with a divot already in it. All right, ain't coming off. Time to bust out the oxygen amphetamine torch. should come off with the air hammer. Works every time. If anything, this stupid soft metal pulley is probably hardened now. Now it's probably even stronger. You just ruined it, it's gonna explode. You're gonna cause all kinds of things. It's funny how I do a lot of stuff in these videos and you all sit there and comment about all these things that are gonna happen, and you know what? None of them ever happen. <laughs> now I don't know about y'all, but it's beyond me why anybody would put a 17 horse crawler on a 22 inch push mower. Oh, that was me. <laughs> I just used that to move the engine around. <laughs> You wouldn't believe how many people come in the shop and think that that engine is actually on that push mower. Well, I thought this was gonna be an easy swap, but I think the muffkin's gonna hit, look. Off with the muffkin. All right. Got the engine on, now we gotta bolt it down. Now since these aren't through bolts, through the oil pan, I want to check the depth on this oil pan because if you use too long of a bolt, you're going to punch a hole in the oil pan. So I'm going to take a screwdriver and my fingers like a depth gauge. And you know what, that's just a little too close for comfort. So this one will be fine. I need to find some shorter bolts. So I always keep all these bolts whenever we're stripping junk tractors every year. And I found me some good suitable shorter ones. So I went ahead and sanded the crankshaft because it was all rusty. And I kind of cleaned out the pulley some because remember it was rusted on. So I'm gonna spray a little lube on here 
We're gonna test fit this. Make sure it slides on all right. All right, now we're gonna add some never seize to it. So next time, if you need to change the belt, that pulley will come off and you won't have to heat it up and heat and quench and ruin the crank seal. So we'll goober it up with this. Goober, goober it up. Remember Goober from Andy Griffith's show? Goober, goober, goober. Oh, I took the parking brake off. Oh, I gotta put the brake back on. All right, brake on. So as I say, remember Goober? Now y'all, you city folks out there, you all got Uber. When you need a ride share, you got Uber. Well, out here in the country, we don't have Uber. We got Goober. <laughs> he picks you up in a tow truck. Gives you a ride wherever you want to go. Put the clutch on. Now we gotta line up our anti-rotation. So I tighten that bolt. I gotta loosen it up a little. Alright. Let's get that lined up. Put our bolt in. Hold our clutch for us. So we can let this stupid thing down. Now we can tighten this engine bolt. That's holding our clutch. Let's go ahead and plug our clutch back in. And then I'll give me a zip tie and zip tie this back up there again where it was originally. Which was right here. To this stud. Let me get a zip tie. So this is the original muffkin and I went out in the junkyard and I found this muffkin. It doesn't have this extended part on it. So I'm just gonna cut this off because I need this elbow. So I'm gonna whack this off right here and then come straight out and see if I could use the old muffkin. Well, that didn't work. I thought this had the right spacing. Must have been for Briggs and Scranton. Oh, well. So I just thought I'll just take my Florence grinder and I'm just gonna cut some of this off and then I'm gonna cut it off. We'll just do that. All right, we got our pipe reinstalled. Now I gotta go from here to here and that's going to be up like this so I have to make me a little transition pipe out of some old muffkin stuff I got laying around well as you can see I cut it too short then I had to tack that little piece back on but it still don't line up right so what I'm going to do I'll take the oxygen amphetamine torch and heat up that elbow and I'm gonna tweak it over. I'm gonna bend it over. All right, we're getting closer. This is why you gotta do all this fabricating. So now I'm gonna grind some off of this pipe on the inside to get it to butt up against that other pipe better. 
and then I'll tack it, then I'll take it off and weld it all the way around. All right, there we go. I had to heat it three times with the oxygen amphetamine torch, and then I had to grind on the pipe, but that's what you gotta do. You gotta keep nipping away at it. So now I can get the welder over here and tack it in place. All right, there's our pipe, all welded, smoothed out. Got a new gasket for it, hit it with a little high heat barbecue paint. Now we'll get this part done and then we can start making the connections to the engine. Now we've come to hooking up the electric and hooking up the cables. And the cables, of course, are too short. And then I went online and plus this is broken, the throttle control. And snap off. So I went online and bought a new one. But again, for this model they're gonna be too short. Now I'm sure there's some other model simplicity that uses this same setup that probably has a different engine and they're longer cable. So I think I've come up with a solution. Because another problem is this crawler engine has got the type of throttle that when you go all the way up, it also chokes it. And this has got a separate choke. So we need to eliminate one of these. Now, they do make this engine with a dual control plate like this, where there's a separate choke and a separate throttle, and I searched the junkyard and I cannot find one, I don't have one. So, I think I got an idea. So we're gonna pop this out. So there's a couple of, you just pinch it, and this comes out. You just pinch these here on the side, and this comes out. Now you cannot buy individual parts for this. This only comes as a complete assembly. Now there's a little locking tab here. So you gotta get that up, careful not to break it. And then you can split this throttle control apart. Just gotta work it, work it apart, there you go. And then it comes apart. So it's got these little springs in there. And these cables have these ends on there. So in order to lengthen this cable, we need to remove that. Now I already made up one. I already took this cable apart ahead of time. And I got that that off and already put it on the new lengthened cable. Now you're probably wondering, how'd you do that, Carol? So if you look closely, there's a little divot there and there's one on the other side. So you take a drill, which I've got here, and you drill that out. And then we're gonna take it in the vise and we can pop this off of there. So put the old cable in the vise and then with a pair of side cutters, you want it close to here. You can pop that right off. Cut that off. Now we can reuse this. Hey, 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 nifty trick, ain't it? Now you can buy this cable. This is 50 feet. I got this from Rotary that's got that black plastic coating on it. And there's the Rotary number, 9136. They don't go by 039136, they go by the last four numbers. 
9136. And then you just take a, a razor knife and you just cut the, the coating off so you can get the new part on. You just got to strip it back. And then you can screw it on there and then like I did, I just turned it to another flat spot and I took a center punch and I made another divot on both sides to hold it in place. Now, if you don't want this, you know, they also sell it without the coating on it. And you could do the same thing. Now all we have to do is add our inner wire and then use our Z-Bend, 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 Z-Bend. So I need a little bit more than that, don't I? Put our inner wire in. Make sure we give ourselves enough. So since this is broke, and we're only gonna use one lever, because we have that single control, I'm gonna use the choke lever as our throttle lever now. So we need to pop this out. Take our spring, put it on the choke side. And now we're gonna put this over here and I'm gonna turn this so the broken part isn't showing. There, like that. See, that's on the choke side. Now I get my Z-Bender. Where is that Z-Bender? There it is. Thought maybe Elkskins had it. Come on, follow us. Put my Z on. So now I'll go ahead. Got our Z-Bent in there with our Z-Bender. I'm going to lay the cable in there. Put the spring in. Now I can lock it in place. There we go. Now we're in. Now our choke has become our throttle. Now we can put the case back together. There's our dinner. There's our dinner. Now we got our throttle again. Now we're ready to reinstall it. Oh, we gotta do one other thing. Mr. Paint Pen! Here's Mr. Paint Pen. So since we don't have a choke, we need to take our paint pen and get rid of all this information. Cover that up, paint over it. Now we need to add our choke symbol to this side. So now with a silver Sharpie, we're gonna add our choke symbol to this side. That'll work. So now we can reinstall our throttle control. That's been lengthened. So I made it longer than it need be so I can always cut it down. So let me get that silver sharpie again. So I can see where to mark it here. So we want to cut it right there. Then we want to cut back the outside. So I'm not going to cut all the way through. I want to find the wire and just nip it. There we go. Now I'm gonna take a razor knife.
Cut that off. So we're at idle. Right now, I got the lever at idle and when we flip it up, all the way, that's gonna be our choke. There's idle. We gotta leave it a little bit long to allow for the Z bend. We wanna come to us. So our leg ends up to the inside. A little too long still. Gotta shorten this up some. And straighten it out too a little. Alright. Now I need to tighten that up. So on this engine, this is our choke. So when I flip it all the way up, we're getting full choke. Look at there, <laughs> look at we repurposed it, and it don't look bad either. So there it is in the dash now. Looks factory. Little choke symbol. And then we don't see where that other one had broke off. All right. Oh. I don't need this anymore. Now we need to move on to the electrical, and then we can, as Elskin says. Come on, follow us. Fire it up, fire it up, fire it up, fire it up. Shut up! Keep hearing that in my head. Fire it up, fire it up, fire it up. So here's our factory plug that that Courage engine plugged into. And there's three wires. We're only using three wires to power this thing. So one of these wires is the kill wire. One is to power the fuel solenoid or that anti-backfire valve. And one of these wires is to charge the battery. Now, on this plug from this engine we took off the Craftsman, one of these wires is the kill wire this one. One of these wires is the charge wire, this one, and one of these wires is for that fuel solenoid, and then these other two wires are coming right from the alternator. These are AC wires, which we don't need. So they're on the opposite end of this plug, which has nothing going to it. So we need to make sure that these three wires are in the right order to plug into here. So we're gonna show you the wiring harness from the current. So here's the current. And here's that plug. Now this has got four wires going to it, but again, we're only gonna use the three. We only need these three down here. So if you look, we've got a red wire, a white wire and this purple wire. Now this purple wire is coming off the voltage regulator out of the middle. That's our charge wire because here's our AC voltage from the alternator. These two white wires are going into the regulator. Regulators converting it to DC which is what charges our battery. So that's this purple wire. This is what charges our battery. This white wire, if you look and see, goes through here, and that went to the coil. So we know that's our kill wire. And this red wire, if you look, that's the red wire that went around that goes to the fuel solenoid or anti-backfire valve. So I'm gonna unplug that wire just to make it simple so you understand, 
And we're going to pull it through. I'm going to take this off. We're going to take these wires off. And I'm going to take this plug and we're going to go over to the to the tractor so I can explain it a little bit in further detail. Okay, so here's our plug that I took off the courage. This was the one that was on the tractor. And that's how it went on, just like that. So this black wire with the red tracer, that's for our fuel shutoff. The purple wire in the middle, that's our kill wire. And this white with the red tracer, that's our charge wire. So let's see how this stacks up. When I go to plug this in. So we got red wire, which I'll have the cameraman. That's the red wire. That's on the outside. That's our fuel solenoid wire. So if you follow this around, red wire, now come to the other side, Mr. Cameraman. That red wire is going to our fuel shut off or our anti backfire valve. Then this white wire, I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna sneeze. This white wire. I already know that that goes to our kill and this black wire in the center that's our charge wire because it's in the center of the voltage regulator. These are AC voltage converted to DC black wire. So let's go back to the other side. This is a ground wire, this black wire. That's a ground, see? That's going to ground. That regulator has to be grounded, otherwise it ain't gonna work. Okay, so there's the white wire that's going in the middle to the purple. That's the kill wire. And this black wire, which has got this orange jumper on it, is going to the white one with the red tracer. And that's our charge wire. Now we don't have to worry about this orange wire with the jumper because look, there's nothing coming out of the other side of this plug. There's no connections, only the three. So this engine, there's no rewiring. All I had to do is plug it in. I don't have to worry about any of these additional wires because they're not going anywhere. And then I can take these clamps and clamp this back, make it look nice to these covers. Now our battery. This battery was in this tractor that I paid $100 for it's from 2018, so it's only two years old. I cleaned up the terminals and I charged it and then I put my load tester on it and it tested good. So now that I got this thing plugged in and I put on a new fuel filter, so that's all good. Here's our headlight wires. Let's see if it'll crank over. It's got oil in it. Oh, yeah, see? Now we need to move on to the deck. So remember, Elkskins brought me this 
38 inch simple city deck and I thought this deck was gonna work but we didn't know for sure because we didn't have the old deck off so this is something you gotta look at gotta look at all this stuff close just because it's the same it's gonna be different I've seen that on John Deere's and stuff too there's always stuff different and a couple of the different things is right here this has got two lifting points in the back our deck one lifting point because I thought well you know it raises and lowers here who cares about that we you know it raises and lowers here but it is different entirely different even though the deck shell is physically the same stamping it's got different brackets uh, this is different these brackets here this is all the same simple city stuff but this is different if you look at this one see how this is different this was for a manual engagement simple city pulley sizes are different this has got an electric clutch so it was just going to be too much work to try to get that deck to work it was going to be a lot easier to just repair the big hole in the back as you can see I already did and we'll hit this with some orange paint before we reinstall it to make it look a little nicer this was frozen I had to lubricate it up and I was checking the spindles I already did this side but I want to show you these spindles on these simple cities they're kind of crappy I guarantee these bearings here even though there's a grease fitting on this spindle the seals are still on the other side of the bearing so when you try to grease this bearing how's the grease going to get to the bearing if there's a seal on there so I went ahead and already took this apart I already did this one took it apart greased it the blades were shot on this simple city the blades were just toasted so if you're, you know, going to flip a mower, you got to have new blades on it, whoever's going to buy it. This baffle, look at this baffle. That's from sand and dirt and grass because we got a lot of sand here. So I already made a new one. Look at that. Looks like factory. So I'm going to reinstall this new one I made. That's garbage. So now we're gonna lift it up and I'm gonna take this off with my handy dandy lift. I already fixed that big hole in there. And I already put the new blade on this side. Isn't that something how they do this? One giant blade on one side and a little blade on the other side and then they use the same crappy little bearing for that bigger blade they needed to use a heavier bearing I don't like these simple city spindles so I'm gonna zip this off we're gonna take it over on the bench and take it apart so before I pop this top cover off of this simple city spindle I like to just mark it with the wizard wheel So that way, that's where you know it goes back together. It just makes it, you know, that only took a second to do, and it just makes it so much easier when you're fitting it back together. Now, they put a stupid, silly gasket in here. And you don't need that gasket. So look, look at the bearing. Look, so you got a grease fitting on here. So you can grease the bearings. So how is the grease gonna get to the bearing with that seal on there? Those seals should have been popped off. And another thing on these is this bottom bearing. Look at, see how, look, it's not even like pressed in there. Look at that. The only thing holding it in there is the grease. Now these bearings were making some noise. It's starting to. This one seems fine. 
but I'm gonna put some new bearings in it. And then we're gonna take a center punch and we're gonna put divots in here with the center punch because that raises the metal so that this bearing will fit in there tighter. Because this is just poor quality crap. So I made a center punch just for doing this. And then we're gonna go all the way around with some divots. Try to put as many in as you can. That way you don't have to buy a new housing. Cause trust me, that new housing, that bearing ain't gonna fit in there any tighter. So the bearing I'm using is this Stenz bearing 230-06 Oh, 230060. They say it works on a Husky Varna too. Husky Myrna. Now watch this bearing that's in here. I gotta knock this one out. Look at that. That's in there tight. I gotta drive it out with this punch. And that other one, I just pushed it out. So now we want grease to get to it, so we're gonna take our pick tool, we're gonna pick the seal out. Now we'll drive it back in. Make sure it's seated in there. And then I'll do the same to this one. So I'm gonna use the spacer to drive this one in. See, it's going in tight now with those divots on there. Now find our mark that we had on there. Put that spacer in, don't forget that spacer. We'll use the shaft kind of line everything up there so now we know it went like that now we can put it back on the deck got our spindle reinstalled full of grease got our new blade on got that new baffle I put in that I made fabricated so now the deck's ready to go back on now this is another common problem on this model simple city is these headlights come out, and you can see they tried to use trimmer line. I'm gonna use our HV350 and I'm gonna glue this back in. And then I'm gonna see how much the lens is to buy. If it's not too expensive, I'll put a lens on it. But we got the hood back on. It's not a bad looking tractor, it's in decent shape. So let's, let's go over what I got into this thing. I paid a hundred bucks for it. It drove when it came in here. It was low on oil and the engine locked up. So I had to put a used engine on it, which didn't cost me anything because I would gotten that tractor for free. So parts wise, um, air filter, fuel filter. We repurposed the throttle, made that work. Four spindle bearings. A set of blades, uh, engine oil, and then some steel, which I already had to fabricate the deck. So I really don't have a lot in this split. The belts, surprisingly, the belts were in nice shape. So I didn't have to replace the belts. All the tires held there. It's got a nice seat, doesn't have a rip in it, other than the headlight part. I don't have a lot invested in it. But your flip, you know, may, may cost you more. You know, you may have to put belts and a battery. And, you know, that starts adding up. And especially if you paid a lot for the tractor to begin with. So that's why when you're flipping these tractors, you got to evaluate all that when you're going to get the tractor from whoever's selling it or if they're just giving it to you, that's better yet. But let's fire it up. Fire it up. Fire it up! Kick on the blades, make sure everything works. And take for a little spin.
Now you're probably thinking, well, what are you going to ask for, Carol? What are you going to try to get for it? Well, I'm going to try to get $600 for it. And I shouldn't have any problem getting that. Because it is a nice tractor, like I said, it's not all rusty. It's in decent shape, and if I can fix that headlight, that will be a plus, too. So, subscribe to this YouTube channel, Terrell Fixes All. I'm Terrell, in case you didn't know. Go to our web store, buy some Terrell apparel, because you're going to have to look good while you're flipping your tractor. And I don't mean, you know, flipping it. I mean, flipping it like mine. You know what I mean. Follow me. Come on, follow us. With the tractors you're going to flip on Facebook and Instagram. Come on. Follow us. You know what, that one don't start? Well, well, it's a jump mower. Get it going. And as always, there's your dinner. Woo! $100 Simple City Regent. Eight, uh, 16, 18 horsepower. Now it's 17. We lost a horse. Welcome back to Shark Tank. Meet Uncle Andy, who claims he has a brand new idea that will truly revolutionize the mower industry. Let's head in now for a closer look at this truly revolutionary idea brought to you by Shark Tank. Hey, how you doing, they sharks? I got an idea for a lawnmower because nobody likes changing the oil, right? So how about we put a little oil refinery inside of the engine. Get a couple of guys working in there and to try to refine the oil and keeping it clean and getting rid of the old oil and they're working on shifts. And just little guys in there. And it's saving you money and time. You don't have to worry about that oil, huh? What do you think about that? That's a real crappy idea. I'm out. Yeah, that idea really stinks. Uh, uh, I'm out too. Point that thing the other way next time. Yeah, please. Slippers, what about you? Uh, well, I thought that was the greatest idea I've ever seen in my entire life. I'm 100% in. You're a genius. You got yourself a deal, buddy. Yeah, we're going all the way. Oh, you will not be disappointed. Finally, somebody gets my great ideas. Oh, this is gonna be great. Ugh, smells terrible in here. I'm gonna light a match, get rid of that smell. Ah, smell, 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 sm